comma, material defect for future negotiations or future potential buyers down the road. This is always a heated discussion inside of the real estate world as to whether that latent defect that was found by the buyer's inspection is actually a defect or not, okay? We see this a lot. A buyer is going to come in, they have a home inspection. The home inspection thinks the furnace is bad. So he says, hey, the furnace is bad. And we didn't disclose that. And our buyer now wants out of the deal. So they go away. Do you write that the furnace is bad as a material defect for future buyers down the road? There are a lot of sellers and a lot of listing agents that say things like, well, I don't agree with his uh, assessment that it's bad, so it's not a defect. I'm not going to disclose it. There are other buyer's agents that come in and go, you know what? You knew that. Why didn't you tell us? Well, we didn't agree with them. So there's a lot of uh, mixed emotions that go on with these latent defects. But the latent defect is one that cannot be found or is not obvious unless you have some kind of special uh, inspection. Radon might be one. The septic system might be one. You may think the septic system is working, but it is not. There is a thing called a stigmatized property. The stigmatized property is a property that is considered undesirable because of an event that may have occurred there. Now, this course goes out to many different states. So I'm going to tell you that you must consult the state laws or seek legal counsel or ask your principal broker as to which one is required. I'm going to cover the Indiana one, all right? So in Indiana, there are five things that will create a stigmatized property. There are five things that will give it a reputation that maybe people don't want it. So the first one would be death of a person on the property. If a person has died on the property, and that is of any reason, homicide, suicide, natural causes, they had to have died on the property. Now, if they got sick, went to the hospital and died in the hospital. That's not what I'm talking about. All right. Um, the manufacture of illegal substances, like a crack house or a meth hat house. <clears throat> the gang activity, as defined by the local laws. Um, the commission of a felony on site like rape, maybe. And the discharge of a weapon by a police officer in the line of duty. These five things create a stigmatized property. So if you've got a gang cooking meth, which is a felony, and the cops break in and shoot one of them and kill him, you could actually get all five at one time, all right? <laughs> so... These are the state of Indiana. Other states have different things. For instance, California. If a person's died in the property within the last three years, you must disclose it. If it's been longer than that, you don't. Now, here's the kicker on these. And definitely, once again, this is an attorney speak, if you will. While these things exist and create a stigmatized property, you as the seller or the listing agent are not required to disclose them to a potential buyer. You are not voluntarily required to disclose them. Don't panic. However, and here's where the attorney speak comes in. However, if you are asked about them directly, you are not allowed to give misleading information. Now, notice what I just said. I did not say 
you had to tell them. That's not what the law says. The law says I cannot give misleading information. So I have listed, I know for a fact, at least one, because my grandmother died in my cousin's house when my cousin was giving my grandmother hospice and mammal died in the house. So I know when I listed my cousin's property for sale that we had that occur. We never disclosed it to anybody. If somebody would have asked, has there been anybody die on the property? I could say, at the Modulin Group, we have decided to not discuss this issue as a corporate decision. If you have further questions, you must investigate them on your own. Notice what I said. Did I tell them yes? No, I didn't. But I did not give them misleading. That is our corporate policy. We don't discuss this. Now, that buyer could continue to push and push and push. And finally, the seller is going to have to make a decision. And we could say, we're not going to talk about it. And the buyer says, well, we're going to not put an offer in if you don't tell us. Okay, my seller's okay with that. We're not going to tell you. So the law doesn't say I have to say yes. It just says I can't give misleading information. You could say something to the effect of, I don't know, stalk, step over the chalk outline and let's talk about it. <laughs> All right. So depending on what state you're in, for Indiana, these are the five. And you are not required to voluntarily disclose them. Different states have different requirements, especially with this one, death. Um, Oklahoma, I believe, requires that you disclose all deaths and there's not a time frame given like the California one, all right? So check those out. And if you have questions, email me and I'll try and find out a specific state for you, okay? So those are what's called a stigmatized property. The last thing I want to talk about is this thing called Megan's Law. Megan's Law, this is the sexual predator list. Now, I think back here in your notes, um, some states consider the residency of a sexual offender as a stigmatized property. I'm going to tell you I don't agree with this because that is the neighborhood. That is not, has anything to do with the house. Megan's Law is not a reporting law, meaning there's no one that tells you you have to go search that. And Megan's Law is the sex offender registry. I know I have had one client that I told me they wanted me to write an offer. We looked at a house. They really liked the house. They told me, go home, write the offer, email it to us. We'll sign it. We're really excited. We love the house. I was driving home and got a call from the husband. And he said, hey, Raymond, have you written the offer yet? I said, no, Robert, I haven't got to the house yet. He's like, well, good. My wife's changed her mind. She looked up the sex registry and there are like seven registered sex offenders within a block of us. We have decided to not put an offer in. Cool. I will obey that obligation. We are not going to write an offer. But that is something they had to go search out, not something that any pamphlet was given to us to tell us, hey, these people, that's why I don't agree with the disclosure, because that sex registry could be wrong. They could have moved yesterday. Somebody could have moved in yesterday. So it may not always be correct. But Megan's Law is one that you have to go out and search. And in the Indiana Purchase Agreement, as well as the New Jersey Purchase Agreement and the Louisiana Purchase Agreement, I do know that they actually explicitly state the website to go look at to search the database. Uh, IndianaSheriffs.org is the one in, Louis in Indiana, and Louisiana's website is something the same familiar, uh, the Louisiana Registry database.com, I believe it is, um, will have all the registry of the people that have registered that are on that sex offenders list. All right. All right. So I want to thank you for joining this chapter here. Uh, we talked a little bit about agency and all the players that are involved. 
We talked about what terminates the agency and how they're seven for one and only six on the buyer side. Don't forget that there are questions at the end of this online chapter right down here, probably the next one below me. And there are also chapters or questions at the end of the chapter in your book. And once again, as always, if you have any questions and you want to contact me, feel free to email me at Raymond at realuniversity.com. We'll come back and do another chapter.